Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8 pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details, U.S. only. That's the ease at which you get information. You're always connected and informed. So if you're diabetic and still using old technology and finger sticks, what are you waiting for? U.S. Med carries the highest quality continuous glucose monitors, which provide real-time readings of blood glucose levels. U.S. Med is an approved provider for Medicare and over 500 private insurers. Visit usmed.com slash radio today. That's usmed.com slash radio today and manage your diabetes as easy as... Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW The Rock of Seattle. BECU presents the KISW Financial Advisor. Here to talk money, please welcome Todd. I invented numbers so I know how this stuff works. Peach. That's right, man. On with us is Todd Peach, baby. Hey, Todd. Morning, BJ. So if you got questions for Todd, uh, it's simple. He's had a lot of experience, 25 years, over 25 years experience in the financial world and uh, a great member of BECU, just like anybody who is part of BECU. You're not just like going to the bank and the bank has a bunch of stockholders, whatever. BECU is a member owned credit union and uh, they do everything a regular bank can do and a lot more since basically they're working for you. And Todd's been with BECU for a long time, which is why we have him answer your questions. And if you live, work or attend school here in Washington State, you can join BECU. And whatever you got, man, any questions you have, Todd, I'd be happy to answer for you. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, we got our first text coming in. Uh, my girlfriend and I are getting married this coming July. Yeah. And I want to buy a house. Does it make a difference if we try to buy it before we are officially married? Uh, no. <laughs> Easy. Next time. Um, <laughs> that works. <laughs> no, I mean, when you're, when you, whether you're married or not, it doesn't matter. What matters really is. You know the credit, how much down payment you're putting, uh, each of your income. Uh, those are the those are the main factors that go into the purchase. So it doesn't matter if you're married or not. So if if the time is right, you know, go for it. Okay. On the flip side, this person is my girlfriend. And I just bought our first house. We're wondering who should claim it on the taxes. We don't plan on getting married anytime soon. Oh boy. Uh, who should? If it's co-owned, don't they both claim it? Is is that how that works, oh. Todd? It's a little tricky, you know. I'm not, I'm not a tax expert, BJ. So uh, I'm probably going to have to kick that one down the road a little bit. Um, uh, but I believe that, you know, if you're, if you own half of it, um, my guess is going to be you're going to get half the interest and half the property taxes on yours. Yeah. So it would be, you know, you couldn't, you can't go one. I don't believe. Again, I'm not a tax expert, but I don't believe you can go one way or the other with it. You're going to have to split it down the middle, most likely. But again, we can look that up. If you want to email me, um, I'll be happy to look at the IRS uh, publications and figure that out. Well, Todd, let me ask you this, because, you know, a, a lot of people do not like to talk about the right thing to do with money. They just get all romantic and, oh, wouldn't it be great to own this together? But buying a home... When you are not uh, joined by marriage, I mean, at that point, then you, sh you probably should get some financial advice about how to do this just so that you're both protected, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, when you own it, you, you own it together. I mean, it, it's really no different than when you're married, though. Be, I mean, to a degree, it, it, when you're married, if, you, if you're not married anymore, you're going to have to one person is going to have to buy it from the other. Right. Or sell it, which happens most of the time. Um, but I mean, it, it, when you own the property and whether you're married or not, it's still a legal obligation for both of you. Um, so if one person's not paying their fair share of the mortgage, you're, you're responsible for it mm -hmm. and whether you're married or not. 
Well, I guess my point, exactly. yeah, my point being is, is that let's say, you know, it's boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, boyfriend, boyfriend. Okay. However, one of them decides that they're going to have their name on the, you know, the like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you someone could put their name on the on the uh, on the title and you might have kicked in some cash, but maybe your name's not on the title. Like there's a lot of things that could go oh, wrong sure. with this. If you love don't will yeah, find so a way, wanna, BJ. I, I, love will find a way. Love will find a way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're not on the deed, right? It's a deed for a house. Yeah. Um, that that the person on the deed owns it and controls everything. Um, so if you've paid, you know, maybe you went together and you said, "Oh, I'll, put, I'll pay twenty five percent down," but you're not on the deed. Well, you owe no, you owe nothing. Um, yeah, nice. honestly. And then um, you've got. You're saying? Yeah, exactly. And then you got to hope for what? Because I think Washington is a common law state, which means eventually, if you're living together, you do end up owning half of whatever that other person loan. Which, by the way, is another thing people have to think about when they're getting into involved in any sort of purchases. Like if you're living in the same place with somebody, you all of a sudden, I mean, don't you have that too, Todd? Where it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of things that people just don't think there about. There are a lot of legal things that can happen over the years, right? Absolutely. So if you're making that big of a purchase, yeah, I would sit down and. But, you know, I mean, hopefully you're serious about that person, but things can happen, right? So yes. just just kind of know everything that you're getting yourself into um, and, and plan accordingly. Yeah, it's never a really, you know, nobody likes to have those fun conversations because, like Steve says, people believe love will find a way. And you know what? So will basically breakups. They will find a way, too. <laughs> love will pay the mortgage, man. Oh, if love pays the mortgage, That's too. my wife is like, what if we can't afford this? I'm like, love will pay it. 206 421 Rock, <laughs> text us at 77999. We're talking to Todd Peach from BECU.org. And don't forget, you can, you can sign up. It's a great way to do banking at this credit union. Dan in Seattle, you're on with Todd from BECU. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going, guys? Not too bad. What you hey, got Dan? for Todd, Dan? So I have a question for you. I was wondering so we live in Seattle, and we live in a house. We've lived there for about five years, and we have a good amount of equity in the house, but plan on staying there in, in, until it's paid off. And, someday selling the house and using that money as part of our retirement. But I was wondering if we were better off doing that or selling the house and taking the equity that we have now and moving somewhere cheaper, paying for a house in cash, and then just starting to save money through our income now. Ooh. Well, I mean, I, to me, it's, it's about a quality of life. I mean, do you like living in Seattle? Do you like your house? Do you like your community? Um, or would you be happier moving out somewhere else um, where it's less crowded? Maybe you don't have, um, you know, some of the taxes and things that you pay in Seattle. I guess that would be my first question is, you know, you're going to, you've been there five years. You say you're going to be there till it's paid off. Well, that, I'm assuming you have a 30 year mortgage. That's 25 more years. That's 25 years of your life. What kind of, what's the quality of life that you would like? Well, that would I mean, be my question. The, the one benefit to us, that would that would be for moving away to somewhere cheaper would be that we could stay there forever instead of someday having to sell it for some of our retirement, which we would have to here. Or at least mm -hmm. we would hope that we could, you know what I mean? I say go with the one that's closest to the Jimmy John's. That's pretty much how I <laughs> Whichever one is closer to the Jimmy purchases. John's? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. I mean, house is closest to Jimmy John's. See, this is why you need a financial fast. advisor. I mean, you don't come up with these <laughs> Jimmy John's-like questions. <laughs> I think you're right, though, Steve. I mean, it's about location, right? Thank and, you. See, um, location, Todd location, understands location. my language. <laughs> <laughs> Todd. Whether it's Jimmy Johnson or whatever, um, you know, but you know, it's possible too, Dan, that the, you know, the, it could appreciate more in Seattle or it could not. And so, again, I would look at you know the schools. You have kids. Are you going to be raising kids? And what that environment is going to look like? Um, what other options you have outside of Seattle? There now that um, we have. A lot of people working remote that may not change for a lot of people. A lot of people are moving out into the suburbs where they can get more land if that's what they want or, you know, um, just, you know, whatever, whatever they, they want. Um, but, you know, look at the school districts. I would say that would be the first thing if you're going to have kids. Um, what's the school system like look like where you live now and where you could go? That could play a factor in, into that as well. But I don't know that I would base, um, you know, 25 years down the road whether I have equity or whatever, because your equity could go higher or could not in Seattle, or mm -hmm. it, it could do just fine out in a community. So I guess I'm looking at quality of life, schools for the kids, um, you know, you know, bigger yard if that's what you want. If, if you don't want that, then, then go there. So I guess I would just be weighing, um, you know, again, that quality of life and 
what's going to be best for your family over the next 25 years. And this seems like another bigger conversation, uh, Todd, because the fact that he's asked a question about what he's going to do with his retirement. And he's, he thinks that, you know, maybe his house is going to be a path to that. And that's another financial advisor question. Yeah. I mean, really, because a lot of people, you know, they, they have different philosophies about using your house as basically your retirement. A lot of, some people believe that's a good idea. Some people believe it isn't. And that really is where a financial advisor can help you out. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, BJ. This is one piece of that financial retirement puzzle, if you will. Um, you also have, you know, Roth IRAs and 401ks and if you're lucky enough, pension. So the house is possibly one thing. A lot of times people do stay in their house so they, um, or sometimes they'll downsize to something smaller. But I can say if one, a lot of times if you'll move out of a higher, um, maybe, uh, should I say a higher pricing district, um, like Seattle to a suburb, you probably won't get back. So it's it's much harder to go the other way um, than it is to go down. So yes, um, for for some people, a house is part of it, but it's a it's a leg of the stool, if you will, not the whole puzzle. Someone that has nothing to do with houses. I have a text question saying, "I just took out a personal loan to pay off some credit cards and build credit." Was that a stupid move? Hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like how I don't know the whole, is. the whole thing, but to me, um, you know, taking out debt when you don't have to, if you don't have to, but she said pay down some credit cards, right? Pay I off, heard that right. Yeah, pay off some credit cards and build credit. Okay. Um, and Todd, can I just say this? I mean, it's great yeah. that they ask you this question, but wouldn't it have been better to ask this question before they did it? It's just like when people yeah. ask after they've done it, there's nothing you can do but have regret and remorse and feel like a moron if, in fact, your answer is going to be, no, that wasn't a good idea. I don't know why we don't make these ask these questions before we do these things. Yeah, it would have been nice. And again, I don't know all of the details of this particular situation. But well, in all fairness, um, maybe they sent us a text asking if they should do that. And we never got to it. Oh, so, I hadn't I mean, thought about that. You're right. We're very busy. We get a lot of texts. And Steve, <laughs> usually, if it doesn't say Jimmy John's, he ignores a lot of those texts. Look, I got pages of texts. You know, I, I do want to take one text. thing. I mean, you don't need to go into debt to build credit. Some people think I have to carry a balance on my credit card. That's not true. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, you just have to use it a little bit, not a lot of it, um, and, and just pay it off every month and keep the, we've talked about this many times, but keep that outstanding balance on that statement, um, below 10, 10% of your credit line. So you don't need to go into to a lot of, to actually pay interest to build credit. That's, that's a myth. Doesn't, I, ha doesn't need to be there. I will say this, Todd, only because it's firsthand experience, because we did do that. It just depends, though. Sometimes you still, like like my son, could not get the best rate for the yeah. car that he bought, because even though he was doing what you said, he still didn't, in the credit report's eyes, have enough good credit to get the best rate, which that frustrates me, because what else is he supposed to do? He was doing everything he was supposed to do. He had to actually right. buy a car to get the credit so that he could get the best deal on buying a car, which is like, okay, chicken or the egg. So I had to co-sign, basically. It's it's, uh, yeah. So I can see why people are frustrated and trying to figure out a way to game this credit rating system, which still does seem to be a little just murky. And I find to be almost, uh, you know, in my mind, criminal the way they have the power they have when it's, you know, people get judged and they actually have done nothing wrong. Right. And, and the length of credit is, is about 10, 15 percent. So that's how long you've had your credit. So. You know, like like us, we've had it for a long time, so we built that up. But yeah. uh, but if you're just starting out, I mean, what you can't do anything about that, right? I mean, time has to take care of itself. Um, but that's that's a ten that's a ten or twelve year process. Yeah, it's it, it is unfortunate, and hopefully, you've got parents that can help you out with that. Where, or at least, like you said, people that have established credit that can at least help you get there until you can. Um, but that, yeah, it's I, I can see why people try to jerry rig their own ideas and their own systems. But it would be good to talk to somebody first before you start making those moves. Yeah, send me an email. Always, I'll, I'll respond. Yep, which would you go to KISW.com, and if you scroll down, you'll see the banner with Todd Smiling's face. Him and I are hanging there. Click on that, and any email question you have, he will try to answer. Oh, here's a text. <clears throat> I have mortgage, two car payments, bills, four credit cards. All of this got messed up during COVID. Living off of my credit cards right now because I don't get unemployment. Then I did, but I had to hold back my back mortgage payments. So now I'm living paycheck to paycheck. What do you think I should do? Um, so here's what I'm going to recommend. There's a... Uh uh, nonprofit accredited um, counseling agencies that can help 
Um, if you go to, uh, we, I don't think we have the links up on your page right now, BJ, but we're working on that. But go to nfcc.org. That's nfcc.org. Um, you'll see a list of accredited ca- uh, counseling agencies, um, and you can pick one local or the, most of them, obviously, they're doing it all over the phone right now. Um, if you're a BECU member, um, go to our website, and we have a financial free financial and counseling service for our membership as well That's um, to help you through. Yeah, and they'll, they'll walk you through. We'll pull all this apart, look at your income, look at your expenses. Um, there are programs if you're if you're behind on your debt that they could put you into to to help you get out of that. They actually work with the creditor. So, but again, if you're going to if you're a BCU member in this situation, um, reach out to us. Um, go to our website. Um, and then, uh, but if you're not, go to nfcc.org and you'll stay, you'll stay clear of these people that are trying to take advantage of you. And I want to tell that texture, uh, Todd's absolutely right. Cause I lived that there was a long, uh, there was a many times in my career because of my financial situation and my, and not having a job that I actually was living off the credit cards too, had massive credit card debt. And like Todd said, I was able to work with some of these nonprofit agencies who helped me finally get it done. It, it took a bit, but I mean, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you go through some of these agencies. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't give up. That's the, you know, a bit, it, but, you know, put everything you have to it. It's going to be a tough, uh, tough haul, but you'll get through it. Well, Todd, as usual, man, this time be flying. And uh, if you have any questions and didn't get through on the phone line or uh, text us, 206, uh, what am I saying, 206, just go to KISW.com and actually you can <laughs> scroll down and send Todd an email and Todd will do his best to answer every question you have. And don't forget, man, BECU, like Todd said, they got a lot of great services, in, in, including that one that helps you when you're in a situation with a lot of credit card debt. And if you live, work, or attend school here in Washington State, uh, man, you can join BECU and they do everything a bank does except they will take care of you because you're a member everybody is a member and uh it's it's good business with becu todd thanks for being with us buddy thanks bj thanks steve take care thank you all right here's a question for you uh it has nothing to do with money but it has to do with food oh nice all right so we want to know why would this dude do this why would a man eat a meal that consisted of onions lemons oreos sardines and anchovies, garlic, and toothpaste. Why wouldn't he? That's all one meal. Yeah. Uh, you're going to hear why. He'll tell you at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. Hello, this is Julian Breeding of Bellingham Ford with some very exciting news. We have just expanded our service hours to cover all of your service needs. We are now open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. six days a week. That's right, Monday through Saturday for all of your service needs. No appointment necessary for oil change, brakes, or battery replacement. And remember, we have a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty on all of the work performed at Bellingham Ford. To make life easier, visit BellinghamFord.com and use our new online schedule to book your appointment. We look forward to servicing you soon. The Russian invasion. The heroic Ukrainian resistance. It's the biggest land war in Europe since World War II. And the war in Ukraine daily brings it all to you. From Moscow to Washington. From Kiev to Mariupol. The war in Ukraine daily talks to newsmakers around the world. And to the everyday Ukrainians whose very existence is threatened. Hear the heartbreaking stories of those caught in the war. But also hear about the acts of bravery as history is being made. I'm Mike Simpson. And I'm Charles Feldman inviting you to join us. The war in Ukraine daily on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a guy out there who has the coronavirus, and he's got a video spreading virally um, of him showing how he has lost his sense of taste. And he's doing it by showing all of these different gross food combinations that he's that he's eating because he really can't taste them. I love that this guy's making the best of a crappy situation. That's insane. And he's got a great mullet. So wow. I already love this guy. He's a Jersey dude with a mullet. <laughs> oh, nice. This is nuts. He does toothpaste and orange juice together. Oof. Then he goes on to sample an onion, vinegar, lemon, 
Oreos with wasabi, sardines, mustard, anchovies, and garlic. Wow. I mean, it is really legit when people, they lose their sense of taste. Tropicana with my toothpaste. The onion from two days ago. Balsamic vinegar. A little apple cider vinegar. For real, nothing. Nice lemon. Wasabi Oreos up next. Let's see what happens. Cheers. I can definitely feel that in the fine. There's no flavor in the mouth, though. Wild caught Norwegian huh. sardines. Nothing. Anchovies with capers. Mmm. Wow. Last but not least, clove of garlic. Nothing. I'm hungry. Oh, that, that, beats, that beats my chicken and potatoes I just had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Stay away from that guy's breath. Dude, I'm looking at the <laughs> Oreo amazing. cookie. Like He split open the Oreo cookie and then oh. used one of those squeeze tubes of wasabi and did what looks like four layers of uh, of wasabi yeah, to the huge. one layer of cream. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. It's four times wasabi to the cream. Oh. That's nuts. And he doesn't taste it. No, but he felt it. Yeah, well, that, yeah, he when, he, that say he's gonna do the, yeah, when yeah. he said he was doing the wasabi, I'm like, dude, be careful with that because you, you're still going to feel it in the nose. Oh, yeah, there he is just eating it, and you can just see his eyes. Oh, he's got, like, the, the, the nasal drip going. I, I, <laughs> his eyes just bugged out of his head. I wonder, man, like, it is so weird that you lose your smell, you lose your, you lose your taste, and there it mm-hmm. is. He can't taste any differently, and... You know, for me, like that's such an uh, uh, what I enjoy about eating. I, I probably would lose a lot of weight because mm-hmm. if I can't taste the food, what's the point? Yeah, I yep. had a I have a friend that has the COVID down in Florida, and I was talking to her, and she said, you know, because she has pretty mild symptoms compared to like other people, mm-hmm. but she said that because of that, the worst possible thing is that she cannot taste food. That make me so mad, right? Uh, yeah, I'm with you guys, man. That's like the to me, that's the ultimate happiness is yes. eating. <laughs> does anybody know? Does does it I come mean, my child? But then. Eating, <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course your child. Well, right. yeah. And uh, probably your wife, right? No, eating, then my <laughs> wife. <laughs> oh. Child, eating, wife. Oh, oh, so child's above eating Wait, now. what? Child, eating, wife? Well, this sounds weird. It surely does. <laughs> <laughs> if your child's eating your wife, man, you got a little cannibal on your hands, you need to, you need to address wow. this quickly. <laughs> right, she's yeah. very hungry. Yeah, you got to do she something. She just grew a second, like a third tooth, yeah. and now she all she wants to do is just eat us. Oh, wow. that's not good. Yeah. Bite, bite, bite. Don't let her get all those teeth. That's when it gets dangerous. I don't know why, but of all the things that dis- disgusted me about that was the, the sardines. <laughs> yep. Oh, my dad loves sardines. Yeah, those too. are the anchovies. My dad, yeah. I remember him oh. sardining his ass off every day. Really? He my, loves them with salt. I'd rather the toothpaste with orange juice over a sardine. Wow. My mom loves sardines and she'll put them, uh, <laughs> she's weird. She'll do a tortilla, vanilla ice cream, and put sardines all over Oh, that? No. That's, what? Her, that's her go to snack. Your what? mom? Yeah. Vanilla she ice cream? It? No. Sardines? Well, maybe. I don't know. It's right. It's Reese Steve's right. It does sound like she might have another little Danny coming along. Eh, well, she's in her 70s, so I hope not. <laughs> well, she's a miracle right. woman. <laughs> wow. That, I don't even think I would even want to try that. Yeah, like, it's it, and it's funny, too, because she'll only eat it when she goes back to her hometown, which is like northern New Mexico. It's a small town. And she's like, yeah, it just tastes different here. And I don't, I don't know why. But who hooked her up on that? Like, was it like somebody turned her on to that? I'm assuming so. A or crazy a, person. Or was it a pregnant craving that she just ended up still sticking with? Uh, I don't know that answer, but I would imagine it was probably my grandpa because my grandpa's also the guy that eats pickled pig's feet out of the jar. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm done with all this. Yeah. I am done with all of this, my friends. I just saw a thing, an ad for like pickled whiskey. That sounded delicious, though. That does sound Well, delicious. that's different. Yeah, that is different. That's like yeah. a pickleback. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like an actual brand that like has pickle-flavored whiskey. That's so cool. So you don't even have to bother getting the pickle juice. Yeah, I hope it's as good. You know, sometimes when you don't have the real deal, you wonder, like, uh, how do they make that flavor? Yeah, but I've had pickle-infused vodka. Again, but it was done, though, with the pickle juice and all that. And that was some of the best vodka, vodka I've ever had. All right. Well, I'm, you know what? I'm willing to try. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, give me any booze you got. I'll try it. Right. If I'm on the, on the fence, mix it with vodka. I'll probably like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to... Uh, there it is, Wicked Pickle, which was my high school nickname. <laughs> is that from... <laughs> Wicked oh, Pickle. Wicked Pickle. <laughs> Tell me that's from... It's bottled in New England. I feel like... Uh, or or England. Either New England or England, because that's where Wicked comes from usually, is those two places. It's a, a spicy pickle-flavored whiskey. Oh, yes. I want to try this. Yeah. Right. So it's like Fireball, but pickle. It's a Wicked Pickle. I'll try it. Yeah, because you guys, you, you guys will be like, it's a wicked pizza. Oh, yeah, all the time. So this is a wicked pickle. And every once what? in a while, you know, people, if they like something in England, they'll go, wicked. So, you know, it's either one or the other. Well, we have a pizza place in Puyallup that's awesome. It's called Wicked Pie. You guys should ask the guy if he's from, uh, you know, know somebody or from, from the, uh, New England. But then i got to rethink going there. Like, I like them. 
Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. You don't <laughs> want to find out they're from the New England. No, area. they play yeah. hockey. Yeah, well, back when you could actually go into a place and sit down, uh, they they play hockey games there, and their pizzas just and their calzones are ridiculous. Well, it's probably yeah, wicked it's, awesome. A New Yorker does not want to believe that he likes any Boston anything. I see what you mean. It right. would ruin everything for you. Let's keep it cool, man. Because yeah, New Yorkers think that no Boston pizza, Boston pasta, all of it is horrible, yeah. and and of course Bostonians think ah, nobody knows nothing about nothing. The only thing I have good that's out of Boston is the cream pie, man. Oh, just the cream pie. <laughs> nice. All right, lobster claws are pretty awesome if you haven't had those. This uh, wicked pickle is from Missouri. Yeah. Missouri. Missouri? And it's How one did? stiff pickle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're misappropriating our, our our wicked, and I don't like it. Man. Yeah, they have the... Uh, they, they have Are it you sure it's wicked or wicked? Because I mean, it's spelled W-H-I-C. Oh, yeah. Right. It's wicked pickle. It's wicked pickle. What the hell is that? What's a wicked? Like a wick of a candle, Yeah, because look at the little flamey. Oh, spicy. I get it. Yeah, because it's spicy. Well, that's... Way more logical, but not nearly as cool. <laughs> You're right. That Wicked, is so funny, Wicked pickle. Steve. Wicked. I saw from over here. What do you want from me, man? I, I, want, you, I, want, you, I want you to go back to school. <laughs> what do you want from go me? Go back to school. I just got to get maybe glasses or something. Oh. It's not that I don't know how to spell wickle. Or <laughs> Wickle? I got you. Wicked. You, I'm with you. you. This oh, is really fun. Oh, you're with him? Yeah. How do you no. spell wickle then? Well, they should just call it the wickle. Yeah. I want the wickle. Well, <laughs> we don't know what that is on Urban Dictionary. But before wicked we say pickle, <laughs> yeah. Looking wicked. more on their site, yes, it's wicked pickle, but yes. it's because it's whiskey plus wicked equals uh, wicked. Boom. So oh. you're not really wrong. So um, I'm pretty so, wrong, Rev. So uh, Reb, thanks, thanks for the help. I'm trying, man. But actually, no, you know, Rev, if you're right, and if it's whiskey plus wicked, then maybe they do pronounce it wicked pickle. They and, might actually pronounce it that and way. And then they go this. Pickly, peppery shot is wicked good, but they oh. spell it like wicked. So then it's not pronounced wicked. I guarantee it's probably wicked. So you were right in the first place. You think Steve. so? Yeah, I do. I really do. If they're using wicked yeah. and whiskey and they're putting wicked in their name, they have to be pronouncing it wicked pickle because it makes no sense. Oh, and there they even show you how to say it. Wicked. Oh, there it is. Boom. Whiskey so, and wicked makes I, it a wicked pickle. You know what's so funny? I was right. You guys are all... You were right. And Rev and I, I both you. thought because of the flame, we thought it meant it was a wick of a candle. Well, I think they're probably playing off of that, too. I, I would think. Know, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're confusing. Or me. they're Just trying to give like a little nod to Fireball. So fiery. Yeah, exactly. It's spicy. It's so fiery. Yeah. Either way, isn't wick spelled W-I-C-K instead of with an H? So. That doesn't matter. No, the idea is they're using whiskey and wicked together. That's yeah. why. Yeah. So clearly we're all stupid. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's the end of the... Uh, yeah. Ooh, you can make it with uh, Bloody Mary. They say it'll never be the same. Oh, oh, I see what Vicky was saying. They, I thought, yeah, they, they don't spell wicked mm-hmm. with a W-H. You get yeah. the Wicked Mary, the one stiff pickle, which oh, is just yeah. a shot, or the pickle and pint. Oh, the pickle and pint, everybody. Mm. Yeah. Well, how do we get this? That's the main problem. It's all in. It's all down in Missouri. You they don't have it at BevMo or no, anything? No. Well, we just wasted all this time. We can't even get How'd it. How'd you even hear about this? I saw a Facebook ad. Oh, uh, <laughs> how else? Why is Facebook advertising with things I can't get? I don't hmm. understand that. I thought they were supposed to give me stuff that I can get. I right? Have a, we have a radio friend down there. I'm going to message her and see if we can get yes. a bottle sent to us. That would be pretty awesome. Yes. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's so frustrating. Or we could just we could call Patrick Mahomes and see if he. Oh, guys, he, 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 I'm not yeah. going to do that for you guys. Sorry, yeah. sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, uh, well, let's talk about the fact that yeah, yesterday, Steve, uh, he did get this one right, but he took way too many guesses. Which female tennis star won back-to-back Wimbledon? Serena Williams. Uh, no. Oh. Oh. Won back-to-back Wimbledon titles in 2001 and 2000. Monica Seles. No. Martina Navratilova. No. Oh. Uh, Steffi Graf. No. Oh. Venus Williams. Yes. Dude. You were right there in the family. I know. And you were like, never mind. If it's not Serena, I don't know any other Williamses. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs. We're doing that at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, One of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going except for child support uh, and stop your creditors from continuing 
continuing on with garnishments of your bank accounts, your wages, um, and in most cases, we'll discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound low, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. That's the ease at which you get information. You're always connected and informed. So if you're diabetic and still using old technology and finger sticks, what are you waiting for? U.S. Med carries the highest quality continuous glucose monitors, which provide real-time readings of blood glucose levels. U.S. Med is an approved provider for Medicare and over 500 private insurers. Visit usmed.com slash radio today. That's usmed.com slash radio today and manage your diabetes as easy as... 